All right, so it has been a while since we've done a Mustang video, and here's the update. Put the aprons in which I'm gonna do a separate video on but let's look at this trunk pan okay see the red line okay this is how I'm going to install it I'm gonna cut it there and I'm also gonna cut it there reason being why I'm gonna cut it on those red lines is because the opening for the trunk is 42 inches wide that pan is much wider than that. Okay, so I went on the Facebook forums for these big nose Mustangs, as the Facebook page calls them, 71 to 73. And I saw a couple of different ways guys were putting these floor pans in. They were cutting the tail panel out of the car and just putting it straight in, which is a method. Uh, you choose the right method for you. I didn't want to do that. My tail panel's in great condition. My trunk pan just happened to rot out. Down here in Florida, there's some clayish, muddy areas. I'm not sure where the car was at before I got it, as far as what life it lived, but the rockers are solid. The rear quarters are very solid. The only hole I have is a little quarter size hole on the driver's side, lower quarter panel, and that's it. And, you know, the floor is rotted out, but. I'm thinking it might have slung mud up in the back or something like that. There's no telling. Uh, somebody had put a trunk pan in it when I got the car, but they had bolted it in. If you've seen the other video, it looked terrible. So fast forward, how I'm putting the trunk pan in, we're cutting on those red lines on the trunk pan. And I can run down the measurements. Basically, in the lowest corner, let's go ahead and go over it. All right, I'm going to give you a breakdown of how I came up with these measurements because basically we're going to cut it on this red line and this red line runs center on the flange of the frame. So the frame comes up like a U, okay, and there's a flange that goes this way and a flange that goes this way. All right, so I've got it lining up on the inside flange. So if your trunk is running this way, car is running this way, frame rails are running this way, they have flanges that point to the outsides of the quarters and to the insides of the trunk. We're gonna line it up on the insides of the trunk. Reason being is that puts us below the 40 inch gap that we need to get inside the car. It's 40 or 42, let's, let's check it out. 40, so I think the opening is 42 and this gives us two inches to slide the main center piece down on in the car and when we cut the red line out, that lines us right up on top of the frame rail so you actually get a solid seam across. So when you finish off the weld, you shouldn't be able to tell that it was ever welded together. So let's look at how I came up with where to put this red line so it lines up on that frame rail. Let's check it out. Okay, so starting from down here on the lowest corner, all right, I measured out at about six and a quarter inch, all right, to the red line all right now we move up nine and a half inches from here because this is where the frame rail starts to veer inward all right so we want that measurement so from the edge you're getting six and three quarter inches all right now let's move up to the top corner up here you don't need a measurement from there to there because it's the trunk pan it is what it is it's fixed so let's get our measurement over here it's about seven and a half inches to here. Now you mimic that on the other side. Now what you should do is mimic that. Oh, shit. Now what you should do is mimic these measurements on the other side and when you cut your piece down into thirds, okay, you're gonna have three sections. Then slide it in there, make sure you're good. You should be good either way. Even if you didn't line up on the frame rail all the way down it, if you get half of this thing welded to that frame rail on the seam, that's fine. You're gonna have more than enough holding it in there. And then you can go and drill 
uh, some top, uh, some holes in the top of your trunk pan to line it up on that flange and mimic the spot weld that would have came from the factory by doing just what they call a plug weld. You can even do that anyways, but if you're, if you did the measurements right, you should line right up on the uh, flange of the frame rail and it should be cool. You can weld that puppy straight down the line, it'll be solid as a rock. Now if you're a stickler, this is kind of thinner metal, this is from Spectra. I uh, ordered it from CJ Pony or National Parts Depot, something like that. was National Parts. Yep. And, uh, you know, it could warp it a little bit. but And this thing's welded in so many different places, it's unreal. Now, something else to note, where your staggered shot goes on the driver's side actually welds to the underside of this trunk pan, along with a brace, all right? Now... Having a lift is going to make this much easier, or a rotisserie, or just being able to jack the car up in the air, because welding upside down is very hard to do. It, I mean, it's really hard. So, if I would test fit it, put it in the car, and do my technique where you set it in the car, crawl under the car once it's in the place it needs to be in, and then dust the underside with some type of paint. I use weld through primer because I'm going to put it on there anyways. And uh, what that'll do is give you the silhouette of where the piece is that you need to weld in, and you can do it from the top side, all right? So you're basically picture framing it out, so that way you can weld it in from the top side. Okay, so as you can see here, we've cut the trunk out, and I'm doing a little test fit. Uh, all the old trunk pan still hasn't been removed, but for the most part, it's out of the way, and the wheel tubs are kind of hammered inside the wheel well a little bit, so that way I shouldn't have any problems sliding this trunk pan down inside of there. But, as you can see, I'm running into a few problems having to get some of these huge pieces of what look to be seam sealer out of the way just to get this thing to fit in there properly. And, in the end, it still doesn't end up fitting properly. Uh, I'm not going to cut up any more of the trunk pan until I get the rest of the old stuff removed to know for sure. But I'm pretty sure I can tell just from what's going on here that it's going to have to be modified quite a bit. But let's look further into it. Okay, so the problem I'm running into here is the pieces not really wanting to line up. Of course, some would say, well, dummy, just move the big one back. Okay, so here's part of the problem. The halves are not lining up in a big way and you can't just move this one back because we're maxed out here of course you could trim it down and then slide it up there let's see here i think That may be what we have to do. Or this one's got to slide up. And I think part of what's going on here is how the prior one was removed. You can see the wheel tub. I mean, it may need to be popped a little forward but you can't go much more forward I mean obviously I still got to take all this out all this stuff but it wasn't bad after doing the measurements this is definitely the way to go thanks for watching the video if you want to see more stuff let me know I do read the comments I try to respond to them all uh, but 
when you get into these projects, you try to get on them and stay on them for a long time. So if I miss one or two of you guys, I apologize. Sometimes it takes me a little while to get to you. But uh, if you like it, let me know. If you don't like it, let me know. I'm into constructive criticism. If you think it sucks, tell me why. If you want to see something in particular, let me know. If you see something hanging on the wall and you want to know the story behind it or what's coming up, let me know that too. There's things you can look forward to are um, we're going to start doing some of the body work on this quarter panel and at least getting that quarter panel in the roof and primer. I've already got this fender and primer, but it still needs some working. But it's just epoxy primer to seal off the steel. And then we will be starting on an ivy green 66 Mustang. 289 two-door car. It's been in a one-family car. Second owner, which is the daughter of the man who ordered it new. And what an incredible piece that is. I cannot wait to share that with you all. So stay tuned. Have a good day.